Hey everyone, it's Alex and welcome to the Decks of the Week, the weekly series where I showcase the top 10 best decks in Marvel Snap. If you'd like to support my content, and the like button is the best thing you can do. It's free and it's all that YouTube cares about. One thing worth mentioning here is that the statistics we're talking about today are all from Untapped, filtering the top 50% of Infinite, which ensures that we get no bots, and also collection level 6000 and above. That is also very notable because you're going to see a compression of cube rates in this top 10 list. The massive OTA we received was only a few days ago and I still think that the best deck for the current meta has yet to be discovered. One thing worth noting is that uh, as we go into the weekend we also have a compression in well games played for certain archetypes that may not be represented in this list but still contain high win rate probability. For example, Ultron. People moved away from playing Ultron in favor of playing some of these newer brews, and the result of that is although Ultron still maintains a relatively high uh, win rate, its play rate has plummeted, which prevents us from having statistical confidence in featuring it in this top 10 list. Um, it's also worth noting that it seems like just there's less games of Marvel Snap being played right now, and so we're losing statistical confidence in these kind of moments in between patches. These are the best decks we currently have available, but I challenge you out there to start brewing because with your new brew, you just might crack the code of this new meta. With that being said, let's get started with deck number one, and it's gonna be Loki. Loki running a 53% win rate and a 0.15 cube rate. Um, this has been an anomaly because at very high uh, MMRs and of course during Infinity Conquest, Loki continuously is a fantastic option, especially in the hands of a Loki player that plays it very consistently. What's interesting here is that the cube rate extremely compressed at 0.15, which is way too low to reliably kind of rank up with. And so for the average person, Loki is probably a pass. However, it's pretty interesting to think that the new Loki uh, decks, which are using the uh, Angela, Kitty Pride, and Elsa combination with some value plays like Red Guardian and Mockingbird are just not quite overperforming the meta, especially how this deck has been fairly consistent for a while. So 53% uh, win rate, 0.15 uh, cube rate, a little bit on the weaker side, but in the hands of a skilled Loki player, still definitely dominant. We go to number nine here, and this is pretty cool because we've discussed in the past about how Destroy, for the most part, is like a barometer for the meta. It helps us to understand where the meta is at because, I mean, this list has been so consistent for so long. It gives us an indication of where things have gone. At 0.19 cube rate and a 53% win rate, Classic Destroy is somewhat struggling. That's not to say that Destroy is struggling. We have a brand new Destroy deck that we can't, I uh, can't wait to talk about in a couple minutes here. But Classic Destroy, not doing as hot. Uh, it could be because they're seeing more experimentation with ongoing base decks to, thanks to the Captain America buff. But ultimately, I do think that... Uh, Classic Destroy does represent a pretty decent option in the meta, although you're going to see far higher cube rates elsewhere. It's just interesting to see where Destroy ends up falling at number 9. Now, one of the higher cube rate decks of the week is going to be Blink Hella. Now, Blink is actually seeing a reduction of play rate because I think people are moving towards a lot of the OTA based cards, but that doesn't mean that Blink is not effective. It's still fantastic. In fact, deviating from traditional statistics, I'm actually including this deck with the new and updated version of the cube rate. Last week it was 0.28, this week it's 0.41 at the same win rate, both 54%. The reason why this is statistically relevant is because the existence or the nerfing of Leech brought it from a 28 cube rate to a 41. That's a lot. That's a massive increase of cube rate all because of one card. So if I'm looking to rank up, if I'm looking to be competitive, I might actually be turning to this Hella based deck. I think Hella's in a very strong place right now. And um, without Leech being as prevalent as it was, I think there's a lot of games to be won with that Blink and, uh, sorry, the Blink and Jubilee combination or even the Corvus and Jubilee combination. So really like Blink Hella here. I think this is one of the go-tos. From a win rate perspective, it falls to number eight, but from a Q rate perspective, it's one of the best of the week. That takes us to number seven here. We have Sandy Nomura. Now I know Nomura is part of the weekend mission. Uh, what you have here is one of the better performing Nomura decks, but there's one more that we really have to talk about, which is an absolute banger. This is kind of interesting if you're looking to counter some of the bounce based decks, which you're gonna see a lot of, especially in this list here. Bounce is making a pretty big comeback, and it's only gonna get bigger going into the Sasquatch week. 
Having Sandman in your arsenal, I think is pretty valuable. Sandman really disrupts those uh, plays for the balanced base players, which you're gonna see a lot of going into Sasquatch. And as a result, you get the opportunity of doing some damage here. It's notable that with Nomura, Iron Lad, Captain Marvel, um, Nocturne, they all get above 10 power, which allows you to even consider maybe sneaking Scar in here if you're looking for that weekend mission. But regardless, Sandy Nomura, a pretty interesting deck at a 55% win rate. That takes us to number six, and we have one of the first of the bounce based decks. It's Darkhawk Bounce. Darkhawk continues to be a pretty strong contender in the meta. The cube rate is only fair at 0.23, but a 55% win rate is pretty damn good. A lot of disruption in this deck. You do have the bounce based mechanics of the rock slide not the rock slide sorry the falcon and the beast and this does feature the recently buffed werewolf by night so basically what you're doing here is you're kind of getting that werewolf by night going starting at 3-1 building it up quickly but also having the closing potential of a dark hawk with the disruption of all the pieces that go along with it so overall a pretty good deck coming in at number six at number five here, we're going to have Bast Bounce. Now again, Bounce is seeing a massive resurgence. And what we have here is the Bast edition of it. A lot of these cards benefit from Bast. Mysterio basically becomes a small mini Doctor Doom with a Bast-based hit. And Sage is pretty fascinating as well. Sage being in this deck really does improve it, uh, its cube rate, which is remarkable because this deck currently has a 0.51 cube rate and a 55% win rate, one of the absolute statistically highest of the week. So this deck is legitimately stealing cubes right now. Its cube rate is really impressive. So if you're looking to rank up, this is one of the decks you can most certainly turn to, especially as I said before, going into that Sasquatch based week. Then we go to old lockdown. We have an old lockdown deck and a new lockdown deck coming back to back here. And we have number four. I mean, this is classic lockdown, which you've been seeing the whole time. Um, I've kind of gotten a little wary of playing the Dr. Octopus at this point, but uh, I tend to prefer the list without Dr. Octopus. But statistically, Dr. Octopus still doing a very good job in these decks. Uh, I do like, of course, the Professor Rex combination with Cannonball and Red Hulk it remains an excellent closer while getting a lot of data from that uh, the Daredevil. I mean, this is the deck that you've come to know, and I wouldn't say love because you probably hate it to some degree, but a 0.27 cube rate, 56% win rate, it's definitely winning games, and that's old lockdown. But perhaps a little more interesting is going to be new lockdown. There is a new edition of lockdown here, and would you believe it, it's running Sage and Wolfsbane. Very interesting. Now, the, the uh, number of games or the quantity of games here is a little lower. I think this was about 330 games played when I uh, uh, took a look at it. So statistically... You know, we're still kind of, uh, you know, figuring it out. But a 56% win rate and in the 300 plus games at 0.34 cube rate, that's pretty impressive enough to get to number three on this list here. And again, you got Sage, you got Cannibal, you got the Professor Rex, you got a lot of value here. And I think that it performs exceptionally well considering what this meta is with Bounce. You're taking up space with the White Widow, the Green Goblin, and etc. right? So I do like the addition of the uh this deck here to the meta i think it's a pretty interesting take that takes us to the top two junk and destroy junk and destroy what can i say i mean if you're not going to play classic destroy which is kind of unimpressive at a 0.31 cube rate any 58 percent win rate this destroy deck which we featured last week as well is doing wonders now it's worth noting that the century package has been nerfed which does prevent it from being shan chi but obviously you're getting a uh, negative four power differential from both two power from Sentry and two power off of the void so a nihilus feeling a little worse there however it's worth knowing that little death strike little death strike lady death strike will still wipe out the void without the need of playing a nihilus if that is so your game plan uh regardless i do think this deck continues to be a very strong performer it's one of, it's one of the absolute top in the game at 58 percent win rate so if you're looking to play a new version of destroy it's going to take a little bit of practice but this is the one you want to use and it's pretty cool using squirrel girl to get out the mockingbird early to then blow it all up with the you know the killmonger or the carnage or whatever to get the death out uh, pretty cheap so it's a really cool deck to play i think there's a lot of fascinating uh play lines in this here now one thing i will say here as well if you're not subscribed consider subscribing over half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed we recently just passed 90,000 subscribers and i do appreciate that if you're one of the few that have not hit the subscribe button all I ask is just consider it, just so you can stay up to date with the channel. I would sincerely appreciate it. As we move on to deck number one, it's Wong on Reveal. Now, I didn't think I'd be talking about an on Reveal deck as being number one, let alone a Nomura-based on Reveal deck. But right now, it's running a 59% win rate, sorry, and a 0.36 cube rate. 
again, pretty damn impressive. Anything above 30 cube rate is, is damn solid. Listen, I was playing Wong and Nomura. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was extremely strong, especially with the mobile pieces of Nocturne, Jeff, and Nightcrawler. It's just a good list. It's just a good list. And you have the fallback plan of, you know, doing Wong into White Tiger, Wong into Doom. Whatever you have to do, Wong, White Tiger, Odin. I think that Wong is greedy as hell, but I'll play Wong. I like Wong. Wong's fantastic. There ain't nothing Wong with love and Wong. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching today. I sincerely appreciate it. Hit the like button if you haven't hit it already. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in that next Marvel Snap video.